So it's been a little while since I've added to my video series about individual ingredients. And today is the perfect day for the next one because I just got all of this castor, all of this castorium delivered. Look at all these stacks. We got little ones, big ones. And I was buying, I was spending a lot more money before. I haven't bought a lot of it, but the most expensive way to buy it is fully macerated in a tincture. And then the next, the next bracket would be buying it from a like perfume ingredient dealer that has sourced it already the way that I just have. So the best way to get it is if you can find someone who does trapping for a living. So that's what I now have in my life. So I have an abundance of this now. So I will be tincturing most of this to use um, myself in perfumery, but I will also be selling some of the sacks on their own, uh, maybe selling some tincture fully macerated as well. And uh, in this video, well, in a, in a future video, I'm gonna be bringing this friend on because he's super knowledgeable and he's just as passionate about his job as I am mine. Like he loves doing the trapping and it's like th there's a good reason to do it. It's, a, it's an ethical thing. And I'm not gonna get into talking about it because I'm not a fraction as knowledgeable as he is. So you guys just stay tuned and uh, we'll be doing that video together. But for this video, I'm going to be talking a little bit about the scent profile as well as just kind of digging into these different ones because while he was here in the shop, we were just cracking open a couple of these of the different sizes and the different, um, like, whether it be hard or soft, and they have such different scent profiles. So in general, the Castorium scent profile, again, I've said this in my individual ingredient videos before, if you have not experienced these ingredients on their own, please do. I sell them in just little 0.5 milliliter samples in my shop in the raw ingredients shop section, just for people to get their nose on, a way to be able to get a small amount for a cheap price, cheaper than most places, you'll be able to find it. And uh, you know, you'll no longer be saying what you think you're, you're smelling as castorium in a perfume. You, you'll know what the castorium smells like because it is, very, it is a very unique and leathery smell. And to be honest, it's on its own, it's not always the greatest smell, especially in a, in a tincture. Um, this, the, the ones that I've been smelling here today are quite beautiful on their own. Some of them quite potent, uh, but they very different scent profile. So I'm going to get into the different ones that I've explored already and then I'm going to crack some open for you here on camera and, and talk a little bit about what I'm getting. So one of the first, I've, I've sorted them into three piles because we originally thought that the different scent profiles were coming based on the age. So like the smaller ones were from smaller beavers, younger beavers, and then the larger ones are from older beavers. So but some, some other things came to surface, which may be a variable as well. So anyway, I'll explore what, I, what I've already explored here on camera. So uh, cracked open a little one. And this was, is the classic castorium smell that I'm used to. This is like what I had bought and tinctured already. It's got that leathery, but a little bit sweet. There's something in general, I think, uh, especially with the, the basic castorium smell, which I'm getting from this one, which I have in the one that I've tinctured. It's, it's the one that most of us are probably used to. To my nose, there's something a little bit uh, unpleasant about it. Like I've, I think that there's some, at least one unpleasant aspect about most animalics, except civet. I love civet. Uh, but I can say that there's some unpleasant aspects about deer musk even though it, it, uh, it is also a, a very beautiful ingredient, but there is something that just doesn't, I can't, I can't quite pinpoint, I can't word it properly, but if you've smelled the wrong ingredient, you might know what I'm talking about. It's, uh, it's just not something I'd want to wear on its own. Like civet paste, I could wear on its own. Deer musk, eh. Ambergris, I could probably wear on its own. Castorium, I definitely would not want to wear on its own. But as I've explored some of these other ones, I don't know because I'm getting some very, very different scent profiles. Next one I cracked open was one of these big guys. This is a totally different animal. I'm getting like more tobacco nuances than leather. It is a little bit leathery, but it's got like this 
old man tobacco shop smell. Very interesting versus like a super classic leathery smelling castorium. Um, leather, leather profiles can come across different. I would classify this under like the fresh leather and not like the stanky Russian leather accord that you can get sometimes, but more of like the, I don't know, what you would see in designers like ombre leather, things like that. That's the sort of leather that I get from the classic Castorium. But we're getting some other things here. I'd, I really do want to figure out the variables. If any, and if, if any of you do know the variables and factors that cause the different Castorium sacks to smell differently, please let me know in the comments because um, my friends or myself, we. I don't think we really were able to figure it out, but uh, these are all dried. Uh, you might be thinking this is a factor, but I don't, I don't think this is it. These are, have all been dried for about two years. He is going to get me fresh, like liquid caster right out of the beaver, because that's a totally different experience, which I do have some tincture that I bought uh, from a apothecary's garden. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. But this one, so this one specifically is, even though it's, it's been dried for a very long time, it was a very fat one and it's still a little bit squishy. So there might be like, I don't know, it doesn't feel moist at all, but it's just got such a different scent prof profile. And um, all right, which one was it? I think it was this one. So here's another very big one. And uh, this one is not squishy at all. Very, very hard. And this one, uh, again, totally, totally different. So I think I'm gonna do a whole bunch of different tinctures. I took out a bunch of different jars, got my scale. I think I'm gonna make a whole bunch of different like 10%, 20% tinctures to do each of these justice because they really are so different. And if you're interested in, in purchasing any individual sacks from me, if you're perfuming, um, I, can, I can describe or you can let me know what you're looking for in a caster and, and I can try to point you in the right, right direction since these all are very different. But this one, um, this one has a very dry smell, like versus we have like the fresh leather, then we have like this old man stanky tobacco, and then we have this dry earth going on. This one, it's very mild. So, you know, with naturals, the ingredients are always going to vary. Uh, you know, things are going to change batch to batch because you can't just take one castorium tincture and one castorium sack and tincture it and then take another castorium sack, tincture it and then have the same ingredient to use in another batch. It's going to be completely different like this. This, this dry one is not the same ingredient as this fresh leathery one or this stanky tobacco one. All right, what else did we get so far? Um, there was this one. Oh, wow, this one's beautiful. This one, this is I'm not exaggerating guys. This is, there's extreme variances in these. This one is fruity. This is like, this one is beautiful. I can't say any of these have been beautiful. There was the classic Castorian one, which I said has like s some component that I don't like, of just, which I usually have said about Castorian, but not at all, especially about this one. This one is absolutely gorgeous. It's unreal how different these are. This is insane. Wow. There's so much going on in this one. So this one I had ripped apart. Where's the other half? Here we go. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, I'm definitely doing several tinctures. So that's gonna be a tincture on its own. This is gonna be a tincture. Some of them I'm not gonna crack open because I'm gonna sell. Um, to, to those folks that want the whole thing uncracked, uh, I got to keep a couple of them full. But uh, we've got some interesting stuff going on so far. This is so mild. I uh, I want to crack it open in different spots to, to see if it's 
And if it changes, hold on a sec here. Ugh. Again, very, very, very mild. It smells like light earth. That's the best way I could describe it. Just like a little bit of dirt, sand, like there's really not much going on. It's, it's so crazy. I'm so glad that I didn't do the Castorium video before because my Castorium video would have been essentially what I have to say about the first one, which is that fresh leathery smell. And that does not do the description of Castorium justice because look at all of this variance we have going on. All right, then we have this one. This is a mix of, this has a little bit of those fruity components, but also has the drier earth. Maybe the ones that are just super hard. Yeah, that one's super hard, but that one's super hard too. I don't know, jeez. Guys, what is it that causes these variances? So this has a mix of the fruitiness and a little bit of that dry earthiness. And I'm gonna save some of the really pretty ones to not crack open to sell. So like, here's a nice big one I'll end up selling. And then I'll save some little ones to sell as well. But I'll crack a couple more open on camera for you here. This one, this one's just perfect looking. I gotta save that one. Um, all right. So I'm curious about this one or this one. Oh, I already cracked open one. So yeah, I'm curious about the ones that are seem to be really flattened, which uh, either could be due to really extensively drying or just not a lot of uh, juice being in these sacks. So so this one, um, this one has the earthiness, but also has this, um, it's a darker earthiness that has like that asphalt vibe, kind of like if you've experienced any of Prin Lomos's fra fragrances like um, Axum or um, Aran. It has that, like this, this on its own smells like a Prin fragrance. Very interesting, cool. So I'm gonna make a tincture out of that one. Ooh. All right. Let's cut open one more since this is already over 12 minutes. Let's do, let's do another little one because I've only cracked open one little one. We'll do this one. And that will kind of confirm if that classic castorium smell is coming from indeed the younger ones. Because so far I've only gotten that classic cast orange smell from the young, the young sack there. Yep. Absolutely. It's one more just to, just to make sure. This one's really thin. Let's do, let's do this one. Yep. All right. So if you want that classic cast smell, it's from the, the younger beavers, so I'll keep some of those for sale if that's what you're looking for. But know that there's some other major things going on uh, when we get into these, these, bigger, these bigger ones. So those are going to be priced higher because these are really, really cool. Uh, I'm going to crack open one more medium one just to see. Let's do this guy right here. We'll call these the teenagers. Oh, wow. Whoa. Oh, that's gorgeous. Wow. That one, that fruity one. Oh, man. How would I describe this one? This uh, is transporting me to a national park. It's got this serene beauty to it, this nature vibe, this... It's bright, it's not dark leathery, fresh leathery, anything like that. It's 
Oh, this one's incredible. It has a little bit of that fruitiness, just a tiny bit. Oh, it's reminding me of something. It's not reminding me of Castorium. It's, uh, there's a nostalgic memory that's coming with it. And the first thing that came to mind was being at national parks, but it, I think it goes a little bit further back as well. It's, it's, this is very bright and uplifting, which I never thought I would say about Castorium. All right, I could make this video another half hour long by cracking these open and talking about them, but I think you get the point is that Castorium varies. It's a really cool ingredient. I couldn't have said that before today, so I'm glad that I had this experience and you got to witness half of it. Um, yeah, I will never, ever again buy Castorium tincture from someone, um, from some like perfumer's apprentice or something like that, um, knowing that I could make my own with all these different types by experiencing the, them raw, cut open myself. It's, it's really, this is a really cool experience. Now, if I end up selling tincture of, like if I have enough of the ones with the different scent profiles, then uh, I will put some up for samples. I, I doubt that there will be, um, but I'll, I'll describe the different tinctures. Uh, but at this point, the ones that I've cracked open, I really love, and it's probably just going to be enough tincture for my own personal use. Uh, so I think the only way for me to really sell them is for if I don't crack them open and fall in love with them, then I'll be able to let them go. Though you do kind of smell, smell it on the outside. So, oh, it's tough. These are so cool. These are so, so cool. All right. Cool. Thanks for watching. Take care. This video is going to be unedited because, just because. So more to, more to come. I know I haven't had a lot of time for videos, but uh, the time has been putting, getting put to good use. Uh, and I hope that uh, you guys are enjoying the new releases and following along and stay tuned for more. There's lots to come.